Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. This series of videos is based on the advanced information released by the exam boards ready for the 2022 GCC exam papers. This advanced information gives detailed information about what will be appearing on each of the three papers and will help you focus your revision on the topics that will definitely be coming up. It requires a bit of interpretation and knowledge of the syllabus. So in these videos, I'll be summarizing this information for you, telling you exactly what topics you need to be revising for each paper. I'll also be drawing on my experience of previous papers to give you my best guess for the type of questions you might expect. I think it'll be well worth your time watching it all the way through. If you're not yet subscribed, why not do that now and hit the bell so you'll be notified when these and other resources are uploaded. Now, if you find this video helpful, please do give it a like. This really helps me out. Also, why not share the video with your teacher and your friends, as I'm sure they will also find it useful. Let's get into it. Just a reminder of how to use this video. Watch the video through first. I'm going to go run through every topic that's going to come up on the paper. Once I've done that, below the video, you'll find a whole bunch of links to example questions matching up with those topics. So these are my best guess of the type of question that, that is going to come up. Very worthwhile going through each of those. Finally, I've included quite a big playlist of topics that I've identified with lots of extra questions. At least to give you a bit more extra practice of those topics. So if you're struggling on a particular one, then definitely worth going, jumping through that and reviewing that material. Okay, so let's get let's get cracking on this then. So the advanced information is broken down into the six mathematical strands, number, ratio, algebra, geometry, probability, and statistics. And I'm gonna go through each one and identify the topics and talk a little bit about them. First up, we've got the number strand and it's a long, long list here. But remember, a lot of these skills are gonna be used as, as support skills in other questions rather than them being a question by themselves. Uh, so first up, we've got calculations with integers. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers, aren't they? So um, as long as you can add, subtract, multiply and divide and use your calculator to do these things, um, yeah, you should be good with that. Uh, moving on, calculations with decimals. Again, uh, you've got your calculator with you, so I don't think that's going to be much of a strain. Uh, prime numbers. So knowing your primes, I would recommend rem memorizing all your primes up to 100 uh, so you can spot them in a list. Factors, multiples, and LCMs, which stands for least common multiples. Okay, so can you list all the factors of a number? Can you write down the first so many multiples of a number? Uh, can you find the lowest common multiple of two numbers? Uh, sequence rule for finding a term. So sequences is normally an algebra topic. So presumably if it's listed under number, they're just talking about you following a kind of a, a, a rule. So, you know, you know, the, this, the next term in a sequence is take the last one, double it and subtract three, something like that. So not using any term or anything like that, just being able to create a sequence from a rule. Understand number definitions and terms. So knowing properties of number, you know, um, numbers are odd, even, uh, square, cube. Oh. Um, primes, you know, be able to recognize numbers that, that are, belong to certain categories. Fractions, decimals and percentages, so to be able to switch between one and the other. So if you've got a fraction, can you rewrite it as a decimal or percentage or vice versa? Uh, finding a fraction of a, co a quantity. So what is three fifths of a uh, hundred, for, for instance? Okay. Uh, fraction arithmetic. Now, with all of these, remember, you've got your calculator, so you need to make sure you know how to use the fra fraction button uh, for doing normal fractions, for doing mixed numbers, and changing between the various formats of them. Uh, percentage of a quantity, again, uh, you don't want to be finding 50%, 20%, 10%, 5%, 1%, and adding them all up. You need to be using multipliers. This is the calculator paper. Uh, so knowing your, your percentage um, multiplier methods for this paper would be very useful. Uh, percentage change, again, if, I, if you know a before and after price, working out what percentage change has happened. Uh, powers of integers, so knowing what 2 cubed is, what 3 to the power of 5 is, I'll be able to type that into your calculator. Again, you've got a special key on your calculator for doing powers, you need to know how to use that. And finally, we've got use of calculator as a thing. Uh, so imagine that you're going to get a big calculation to type carefully into your calculator and come up with the right answer. Moving on to ratio, and again, quite a long list. Uh, write the number in a ratio. 
So if you're given a kind of a description of something, can you write it as a ratio, comparing what you've got with what you don't have? Uh, simplifying a ratio, so you can cancel a ratio down. Um, so if it was 10 to 15, could you cancel it down to its lowest terms? Calculate with proportions. Uh, so applying ratio increases or percentage increase decreases to amounts and following that through to a solution. Uh, sharing in a ratio, so can you take an amount and divide it up into a given ratio? Uh, direct proportion, so that's usually when when y is proportional to x. You, you need to know how to find the equation that links the two of them uh, and then go on to use it. Simple interest, so as opposed to compound interest, simple interest you just apply multiple times, don't you? You don't have to apply interest to your interest. Uh, I've, I've linked to a, an example below. And then we've got growth and decay problems and graphs. Now, growth and decay is compound interest, often applied to things that are not interest. So the similar techniques as you would with compound interest, but it might be uh, populations of bugs or, um, you know, the price of a car depreciating. Next up, we've got algebra, like uh, simplifying algebraic products and quotients. So products is uh, like algebraic terms multiplied together and quotients are like a fraction with two, you know, the numerator and denominator with algebraic uh, terms. Uh, so knowing how to cancel those down, so finding common factors and canceling them out, that sort of thing. Uh, multiplying out brackets and simplifying. It's not clear if it's that single or double brackets, uh, but you need to know how to do those. Uh, factorizing a quadratic, and so that's putting the brackets back in again. So quadratics will factorize into a double bracket, won't they? Uh, substitute into an expression. So if you're given an algebraic expression and then you're given the values of like the letters in it, can you work out or evaluate your answer? Uh, solving linear equations, so you'll have something with x in it that you have to then go and find. Uh, solving simultaneous equations, uh, so here you've got usually two linear equations. You might have to form it from a written um, problem, so they might describe a situation to you. You might have to form the simultaneous equations first and then go on to solve them, or you might just be given a pair that you have to solve. Uh, continuous sequence. So this is a second reference to sequences. I should imagine it's the same question. So you might be given a rule and then asked to find more, more terms in the sequence. Uh, quadratic graphs. So not quite sure. You might have to plot one. You might, have to, might be given one and find various features from it. Um, and then we've got graphs of real-world contexts. So you might be given a graph of a, of a scenario and you, you'll need to interpret it and draw information from it. OK, now obviously I've linked to all those sort of questions uh, below, so do take a look at those. Uh, before we go on, just a quick appeal. The last video that I uploaded for AQA Foundation, it didn't get that many views, uh, so it didn't really inspire me to make more of these videos. If you do like this content, then please do uh, show some appreciation by giving it a like. That really helps my channel out and, and share it with your friends. I'm sure they could do with a, a helping hand. OK, uh, but... Uh, if 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 the content I create doesn't get that many views, then I'm not inclined to make more content. So if you want me to make a, a, another one of these um, these videos for paper three, then please show this one some love. All right, let's crack on. Let's move on and look at geometry. Uh, first up, we've got symmetry. Now, don't forget symmetry has got two flavors. You've got line symmetry and you've also got rotational symmetry. Uh, rotational symmetry is the one that most people will find harder, so I've linked to a question of those below. Uh, circle terms, so knowing all the various bits of a circle, what they're called, like an arc and a chord and a radius and, all, and a segment, all those sort of words, you need to know how to recognise those parts of a circle. Uh, properties of a quadrilateral, uh, so knowing about where they kind of cut through axes and where their lowest points are and things like that. Uh, mass volume density, so there's a formula for that, isn't there? Finding density from mass, density is mass over volume, so using that to find various values, or vice versa, maybe you've been given the volume and the density, you need to rearrange it. Uh, perimeters of triangles and quadrilaterals, so at perimeter, you just add up all the, all the edges, don't you, uh, and come to total, that's your perimeter. And volumes of surface area, cuboid and prism. So they're talking about two, that might be two separate questions, one on a cuboid, one on a prism, or it might be one where you have to kind of work out one and pour the, the volume from one into the other. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I've linked, I've linked to a prism question below. 
Next up, we've got probability, understanding the probability scale. So knowing that all probabilities lie between zero and one and being able to place certain uh, events along the probability scale. So where would like flipping a coin be on the scale? That sort of thing. Uh, probability calculation. So can you work out probabilities for simple probability problems? Uh, listing outcomes and related probabilities. So considering all the different possible outcomes, uh, if there are like three choices for um, a starter and four choices for the main, how many different choices is that altogether? Those sort of questions. Uh, tree diagram. Now, this could refer to a frequency tree. Um, I've linked to a question like that. I don't I don't often get like probability trees on, on paper, on the foundation paper. So I think it's a frequency uh, diagram that they're talking about, a frequency tree. And finally, we've got calculation with the laws of probability. So knowing how to combine various probabilities together. So if like, you know, what's the probability of A and B or A or B, how you, how you cope with and combine those amounts together. Finally, we have got statistics, and there's a very, very short list. Only one thing on it, it's averages. Uh, but averages do contain various things. You've got mean, median, mode. Uh, plus, it could be mean from a frequency table, or, or it could be even an estimated mean. So make sure you can do all of those sorts of problems. Okay, and that's it. So a quick quick zip through all the different topics. Uh, don't forget to go through the questions below. That's a really important bit. Me yabbering on is one thing, but you actually seeing an example of the, th of the type of question I think is going to come up. That's going to be the valuable thing. If you discover a, a topic that you do need extra help on, don't forget to look through the playlist of topics that are coming up on this paper. So I've made a playlist for each paper. It's got all the topics on there that uh, I think are going to come up. Just pick out the ones that you that you feel like you need to do extra practice on. Okay. Don't forget that the best revision for these exams is to go through all the past papers from previous years. The advanced information really doesn't change that. Here's a link to all the past paper walkthroughs I've done. Uh, there, there's a link below each video where you can download the paper. If you work through all of those before your final exams, there will be really few surprises for you on the day. Good luck and see you on the next video.